Hello, everybody. Welcome to Late Night Football. Welcome to episode three of our season preview series. Um, and we're doing Manchester United, everyone's favorite. Or well, not favorite. Well, I'm just kidding. But it's my favorite anyway. Manchester United, episode number three. So, as I've said before, I mean, we've done Manchester City and Arsenal. If you haven't checked them out, do check them out. Links, uh, you know, you can go we'll add the playlist at the end of this video. So, you'll be able to find those videos. Um, and then you can you can see that. Um, also, of course, as I said, we're not going to be doing every club in every league. But we will try to do as many of the big ones, the popular ones that we can. So, um, you know, with that being said, um, and also I just want to point out again, reiterate that our predictions analysis is based on what the teams are now or what are strong rumors. Um, not exactly. We're not going to go into, uh, but you know, but things can change, right? Things can change. So um, I'm not going to be able to like look at every rumor and, and, you know, look at every particular speculation. So we're only going to look at what the team is as now or what I believe that may happen but before August 31st. But obviously things can change. Uh, players come in, players leave. Uh, you know, you never know what can happen. So, based on that, um, just keep that in mind as I make my prediction. So, you know, what I'm saying today may not may not be may not even apply at the end of August 31st. But uh, Manchester United. Now, I, you know what? I'll preface this by saying right at the start. Um, I've seen United in preseason, and I've seen them last season. And you know, we I everybody knows I predicted them to finish eighth. Well, everybody who watches the stand knows I predicted them to, predicted, predicted them to finish eighth last season because I already thought it was a bad, bad transfer window. And this transfer window has been a bit of a step up. Not as much as some people think it has been, but it has been a step up. Um, but and they did finish third, right? So the logical conclusion that many people will draw is, well, can United challenge for the title this season? Can they make that step up? And based on what I've seen in preseason, I don't think they're ready for that. I don't think... Um, when you ask me, based on preseason, based on whatever I've seen so far, um, I feel that a comfortable fourth is the ceiling of Manchester United can achieve this season. And I've said it in, in the preseason reaction games as well. I've said that, you know, I, I just, there's so many issues with the team at the moment. The two consistent recurring themes in preseason. One is the lack of goals. And the other is the fact that they keep conceding goals slop, through sloppy errors. Um, the part, the first, the second part of the sloppy errors, I think has, is going to come down because United are now going to play a more high-risk style this season. Um, with Onana in the back, with Onana coming in, you know, there's going to be more, you know, last season, I think they were a lot more pragmatic. Uh, because at times Maguire had to play, at times, you know, they had, they were dropped, you know, the hair because of his lack of passing ability, they used to, you know, the defense to be a little bit deeper. So they were playing a more, a more risk averse style. Um, and this season they were playing a high risk style. The problem with playing that high risk style is if there will be more errors leading that, that, that will, that will crop up and there will be errors that could lead to goals, particularly against the better teams. And so that, that's just going to happen. The issue with that is you mitigate that by getting a good strike force that's going to get you three, four goals a game. That's not going to happen. With Manchester United, they don't have a team that's going to score three, four goals a game. They've got a team that can maybe score a goal here, there. Um, they might you know, capitalize on errors. If you look at the games that were played even in preseason, I mean, the goals, a lot of the, you know, a lot of the goals came from errors, from sloppy people, from the opposition. United weren't really cutting teams open or it was like desperate attacking. So, that that is a concern, and those two are recurring teams, and teams that have both issues at both ends of the pitch, um, is 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 a big you know are not teams that are challenged for the title. Now we're also hearing that Rasmus Holland is probably not going to be able to play two games a week for a while. Um, he's he's out injured, so don't know when he's going to be back. And after he comes back, it's going to take him a, a while to get into match fitness anyway. And on top of that, he's only going to be able to play one game a week. So actually, I was actually saying that we might not see the best of Holland until January. I think we might not even see the best of Holland until next season. I think this season is just going to be him trying to, you know, get get up to pace of, of the Premier League, get up to pace of, you know, Manchester United. And, I you know, I'll be surprised if he scores 10 goals this season. I will be very, very surprised if he scores 10 goals or more this season. So that's already like you've already spent, you know, 78. And I like him, by the way. I think he's a, he's a good, I think he could be a talented young player who could go on to achieve great things at the club. Or could be, or at least great things in the game. But um, you're already looking at 70, 80 million pounds. It's probably not going to be recovered this season. So you already lost out there. Um, with regards to, uh, you know, the strike force again, Marcus Rashford, he's not really a striker. He's not someone who's going to get you a lot of goals from the striker's position. He might get you some from the wing. I, I expect there's going to be a drop off this season. I feel like, you know, a lot, he's become very predictable. He needs to add more to his game. So that's an issue there. Uh, Anthony always blows hot and gold. You don't know what you're going to get out of him. Sancho has looked good in preseason, but again, his end product is still not there yet. So can he be the provider? He can't be a goal scorer, but can he be a provider of goals for Anthony and Rashford? That's another question. So there's a lot of question marks in that front line. Uh, line. Uh, in the back line, the only question mark, I think, is, is probably the fact that, you know, do you pick Van Bissaka or Dalo? 
can that back four, having played a season of pragmatic football, can they take that step up and play attacking foot, you know, more fun foot defensive football next season? Uh, next season, I mean, that's a big question. Nana likes to play that way, but can the other four adjust to him? Or will then will more adjustments need to be made? That's a big question. Um, and so therefore, those question marks. We didn't have that many question marks. I think we didn't have those question marks about Arsenal. You know, when I talked about Arsenal, it's like okay, yeah, this strike force is an issue, but the others are all great. At our city, there's no issues at all. So how can a team that has so many question marks, you know, be considered title challenges? In my opinion, they can't. I'm sure fans will say I'm being negative or pessimistic, but I, I just don't see it. Um, the midfield at the moment looks quite good. Um, you know, you've got Bruno, you've got Casemiro. Uh, possibly Amrabat coming in would really, really, uh, you know, upgrade that midfield a bit more. Um, and then, of course, you've got uh, Ericsson, who can be somewhat of a, of a decent player. They may know could have a breakout season. Again, the issue for me is Mason Mount. Is that is a big question? Is Mason Mount his price tag? How much of that? How much is that going to dictate him starting games? Because so far, what I've seen, I've not been impressed in preseason. Now, maybe you know, regular season it will all change, and suddenly he'll hit a high gear, and you know, we'll we'll get a world class midfielder on the hands. I I wouldn't I wouldn't bet on it, but it could happen. But at the moment, what I've seen, I've not seen a lot. And like I said, I think he'll be the flop of the season for Manchester United because uh, this is the price tag, the amount that they paid for him for somebody who doesn't really have a lot of end product. Because ultimately. Rightly or wrongly, or wrongly, you know, players who play in the midfield, players who play in in forward line, they they judge on goals and assists. They judge on things like key passes, things like that. He doesn't do a lot of that. He's, he's his main attribute that he's going to run around and press high. That doesn't really, you know, it, it's not it's not going to be, you know, it's not something that you pay sixty million pounds for for a player who does that. Um, thirty million pounds, I would have said fine. Sixty million pounds, a player who who can only run around and press high is is not something that you look for. So. That's why I think he will be a flop. Now, maybe that could change. Maybe he will become a great player, you know, and, and I'll have pie on my face. It's not the first time. I thought Lisandro Martinez was going to be a centre-back flop last season after the second game, and he proved me wrong. So maybe Mason Mount will also prove me wrong. But just what I've seen so far, I haven't seen much to get me excited about um, with that. But overall, I think Eric Ten Hag is going to have to now, uh, this season is going to be a key one for him as well. Because again, we know this. He's not the first choice manager for the for the Glazers. He's not the first choice manager for the media. He's not the first choice manager for the pundits. It's it's you know it's the fans uh, who are driving his who have driven his appointment, who have driven his, you know, any other, you know, if it was any other manager, the 7 0 to Liverpool probably would have gotten the sack for that. But because the fans have backed him, he hasn't gotten the sack yet. But this season I think people there will be more pressure on him. Also important to remember Pochettino, who was United's first choice and everybody's first choice, aside from the fans, is going to be at Chelsea. And if Chelsea do well, there will certainly be some people who are going, oh, well, look, you could have got Pochettino, you went for Ten Hag, Ten Hag sucks. Right? Those those kind of narratives will, will, will not take long. So how can he deal with that pressure? Also, keep in mind, if you know, just because I say United are not title challenges, doesn't mean, you know, the media will not say that United are ch title challenges. Doesn't mean that, you know, um, certain people and certain people believe that United are ch title challenges. And that brings with it its own set of pressure of like, you know, where, where teams will try to park the bus when you play against them. Teams will try to hit you on the break on the counter. Um, you know, maybe teams who thought that, okay, they're top four contenders. And so, you know, they're more our level. Maybe now they will see them as, no, they're not our level. So let's park the bus and let's have them break them down. Can you not do an added of the quality to break teams down to park the bus? I don't know. That's another question that will need to be answered. Ten Hag is going to have to figure those things out. Um, and I, I mean, you know, I'll, I'll end this by saying, I'm getting major, major, major Louis Van Hal second season vibes from Eric Ten Hag at the moment. You know, Louis Van Hal first season had a, had a good season. Uh, you know, got them into top four, did really well, came into the second season, everybody had high expectations, thought United were going to challenge for the title. No, or maybe maybe do better, not necessarily challenge for the title, but at least do better and get better. And instead, they regressed, they missed out on CL qualification. Um, you know, the, the, the whole season was a mess. There were, you know, this loss after loss and, you know, it's all kinds of things. And ultimately, Louis Van Hal got the sack. And I'm getting those same vibes on Ten Hag where, you know, there's heightened expect increased expectation. There's all sorts of things, but the team can, the team is not good enough to match those expectations that the media and everybody else has created. And therefore, you know, can United live up to those expectations? Probably not. And if they miss out on Champions League qualification, you know, will Ten Hag get the sack? Probably. Um, and I'll say this, I think they will finish sixth this season. That's my prediction. There's no real logic to it. I, like I said, I think a comfortable fourth is the best they can achieve for, but I think they will finish sixth um, this season. Again, could finish fifth. Maybe, but I'm going to go with six because I, I just feel like they're going to finish sixth. Um, and, and don't ask me why. Like, I don't have, I'm not going to give you, a, I, I know they will not challenge for the title. I can tell you why they would finish anywhere from third to six. I can give you, in, yeah, third to six, I can give you a reasonable, I can tell you why they would finish third to six. I can't tell you exactly why they will finish six. I don't know, but I just feel like they will finish six. That's my prediction. Um, I know it's controversial. I know some people probably hate it. Some people will say that I'm jinxing it, whatever. But I just feel, I just, that's like I said, I said, if, I feel it feels like a Louis Van Hal second season uh, vibe at the moment to me. And um, because there's, there's a lot of imbalance, the team is not balanced at the moment. There's too many, 
too many square pegs in round holes the moment the likes of Mason Mount, who's not a box-to-box -box midfielder. You've got Rashford, who's not a striker, who's going to play as a striker. Um, you know, it's just... There's just too much at the moment that that is, uh, you know, Anthony who's uh, supposed to be this, you know, right, he's a good right winger, but he's supposed to be, you know, he's not someone who can score goals or create goals on a consistent basis. So you got an issue there as well. So a lot of, lot of things I think they'll finish six. My player to watch, I think, I, I'll, I'll cheat and say two because I'm a United fan. I can cheat and say two. I'm, I'm interested to look at Alejandro Garnacho because I think he could be a really, really key player. By the way, a 19-year-old winger who comes in and is expected to shoulder the burden of the, or the forward line. Imagine what that... that didn't that happen in Louis Van Haas' second season as well? Anthony Martial had to had to take the burden of that. Ultimately, he couldn't, of course, but he was the one who was had to deal with that burden. Now, Garnacho, someone 19-year-old, is expected to deal with that burden as well. So, for me, Garnacho is, is, the, is the key player to watch. I think he's been exciting in preseason. He's someone who always seems to have something up his sleeve. So, I'm, I'm excited to see how his development works. Uh, and, and I would love to see that. Because I feel like Rashford is going to have a drop-off drop, drop off this season. Um, and I, I'm, not sure, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure if Anthony can make the step up from last season. So, therefore, I think a lot of burden will fall on Garnacho. And that kind of makes him worried as well. But the second player that I'm really excited and that I'm intrigued, not excited, but I'm intrigued to see how he does, is actually um, uh, Facundo Palestri. Um, you know, someone who always, you know, intrigues me because every time he comes on the pitch, something something happens. You know, he makes things happen. He's a very exciting player. But someone who has always never found favor with any of the managers. He didn't find favor with um, Oliana Solskjaer. I didn't find much favor with Ralph Vanek, although I think he was on loan at the time anyway. But also, I mean, and he's not found much favor with Ten Hag. And he might well go on loan, so we might not even see him. But if he stays at Manchester United this season, I'm intrigued to see how well he does. Because for me, I feel like... Um, you know, it's between him and Anthony. Anthony has, has the advantage of being an 85 million pound signing who was signed by Ten Hag. So he gets that preference. But every time I think Palisti plays, he kind of does some things. And I, and I just spoke about why he doesn't start. And I, and I understand Ten Hag's reasoning for why he doesn't start. I made that. I, I've said that before. But if he can improve that side of his game, um, you know, I, I can't see why he wouldn't be starting. So that'll be intriguing for me. But but I'm excited to see Garnacho this season because I feel like it could be a big season for him. But anyway, that's my thoughts. Um, share your thoughts, of course. Put in the comments. Um, what do you think about my... Um, you know, predictions, my analysis. I'm always excited to hear, you know, what other people have to say. Tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm right. Um, you know, uh, you know, tell me if I said something that you didn't think, you know, was possible. Always share your thoughts, of course. Uh, smash the like if you enjoyed this video and do subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We appreciate your support. We just crossed 350 subscribers on YouTube. So let's move towards 360 now. So please help us get there, of course, by subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye-bye.